Good morning or good afternoon. I'll be presenting on the OpenMRS data model. Um, my name is Ellen Ball. I work for Partners in Health. I'm located in Boston, Massachusetts in the US. And um, I welcome any student who's interested in learning about the heart of OpenMRS. So the reason that I call it the heart is that the data model is a representation of how information is stored. And especially in OpenMRS, the structure of the data model is something that's been built over a long period of time. So OpenMRS is at least 15 years old. And, but the structure continuously changes and improves to um, expand and handle additional uh, knowledge based on experience of the community and also from the founder, founding organizations, Reagan Streif Institute, Partners in Health, and so many others in the community. And the core of the data model is about who is using the system, who those patients are, what they're trying to record, when those things happen in time, because an electronic medical record system is based on a longitudinal record of events that happen over time for a patient. And then where, where in the hospital, where in the world those things occur. So the data model is what describes all of those things. The topics that we'll cover are a very brief description of the difference between data and metadata, key components of the OpenMRS data model, which are visits, encounters, and observations, the idea of a person versus patient and users and providers, and other key components like location, addresses, pro clinical programs, forms by which you enter data, and reports by which data comes out of the system. And we'll end with a practical exercise. So the very first topic, the difference between data and metadata. So data has to do specifically about patients or um, private information that should be always kept uh, secure. Data requires metadata. So an example of this is you can have a name. The name is data, but the definition of the fact that someone has a first name and a last name, that's met metadata, but an actual name is data. Same thing for a phone number. You might define that someone has a mobile phone number. The fact that somebody has a mobile phone number or even the country code, that's all open and public information but the actual phone number that could identify a person is data. Same thing with birth dates uh, or any kind of clinical information like height or it could be HIV status or what your last COVID test was. So that's, those are examples of data. Um, metadata, on the other hand, are things that are shareable. It's metadata, they say, is data about data. And you can have 
things like we'll be covering soon, like the concept dictionary is completely shareable. Forms, the way we collect information is completely shareable. Reports. And so those are things that are metadata. Examples of these is, for instance, address hierarchy. So the fact that Mozambique is divided into certain regions and certain cities or towns, that's metadata. Those are things that are public and shareable within other people, whereas somebody's home address is not. Um, same thing with types of phones. It might be a mobile phone or a landline. It could be, as I say, a country phone, the beginning part of a country phone number, or it could be a report that defines getting data out of the system, but just for female patients. That's an example of metadata. Then we'll get into this key part, which um, these kinds of things, this is data, and a visit and encounter represents data in the, in the system, things that, you, that are private. So a visit is a time period when a patient is in the health system, typically at a single location. So it could be that I go into a health center and I get a flu vaccine. So I walk in, I'm there for one hour, and then I leave. That's a single visit. They could be short or, or it could be a longer extended period. So if I was in the hospital, let's say, for several days because I was delivering a child, it's still a visit, it's just extended over the course of days. Um, an encounter is, um, a visit is made up of many encounters. It could be a single encounter, like I go in and I have a flu vaccine, but it could also be that I go in, I have a lab test, I pick up medication, I have my weight checked. And so I might have multiple encounters with different people. Um, and it could be different sections of a health facility. And that makes up many encounters, um, which lead to a visit over a period of time. To show this in a more graphical way, here's a representation of a visit over the course of one day. And during that one day, the patient has a registration where they collect demographic information. They have another encounter where they collect vital signs, height, weight, temperature. Then they might have a clinical exam where they collect the diagnosis for the person or prescribing a medication. And then another encounter with the pharmacy where they pick up their medication. Um, so these are examples where those four encounters make up a, a one visit during a day, and there are multiple observations for each one of the encounters. So for registration, you might inquire it, what the occupation is of the patient or their marital status. Um, I explained for vitals, you might collect many observations during vitals. Um, and then during a clinical exam, you collect multiple observations. And same thing with a pharmacy. You might say someone gets ibuprofen, five milligrams for 10 days, for instance. And that would be multiple observations with dosage. 
You could also have a multi-day visit. So here is an example where over three days, a patient comes in to a health facility for a visit. They walk in on day one. They have registration, vitals, and a clinical exam. And the nurse makes a decision that that patient should stay the next day, that they should become an inpatient. So on day two, they still have vitals taken again, another encounter. They might have surgery. They might have another exam. On day three, they check their vitals again. And the patient now is much, doing much better and they would be discharged. Each one of those are multiple encounters over the course of, three day, of a three-day visit. Now, each one of these encounters is recorded with a patient. We represent that with a patient ID, a location. So a location could be the name of the hospital, but it could also be a location within the health center. So it could be pharmacy, it could be outpatient clinic, it could be uh, intensive care. The date and time of that encounter. And then who actually is the provider or the creator for that particular encounter. So if a nurse is taking the vital signs, then the nurse would be the pr provider. If a, if a doctor is doing an exam of the patient, then they would complete that encounter. And if a pharmacist is giving medication, dispensing medication, then they would be the provider for that encounter. Um, another important uh, piece of information is the encounter type. So this describes what type of encounter, as I showed on the earlier slide, that it might be vitals, it could be surgery, it could be an intake form for a COVID unit. And then the last piece, every encounter could, ha could have, it's optional, a visit ID. And this is what connects in the data model these encounters to a visit. In terms of the primary keys, the way that observations are linked to encounters are through encounter ID. The way that an encounter ID, an encounter is connected to a visit is through a visit ID. It's possible to have observations without an encounter. And likewise, it's possible to have an encounter without a visit, but those things are fairly rare but the model allows for that. So we touched a bit on observations, um, and then you can also group together observations as an OBS group. So uh, OBS is the name of the table, but it's really an observation, a single piece of information that's recorded about a patient at a moment in time. So this could be that last week, a patient came in, they had a COVID-19 antigen test, which was positive. And then this week they came in again, maybe they had another test, maybe they had the same test, Maybe today's test showed that the test shows as invalid answer. So it's an observation at a different time about um, something that's observed uh, about a patient. Likewise, you could have a more complicated OBS group. So this is because sometimes a single observation is not sufficient to capture all the information that has to be grouped together. 
So an example of this is that you might want to record not just the results of the lab test, but you might also want to record what the source of the specimen is. In one case, in the first case, the test came up positive. It was an antigen rapid test, so that COVID test, where the specimen came from their nose through a swab. And the collection of that sample was on September the 1st. So you group those things together. In the second case, they took another sample. The antibody test, a different test, came up negative. Mm -hmm. The specimen was from blood and the collection date was on September the 3rd. So it's important to group them together so that you're clear what the test is, what the, where the specimen's from, and what date that sample was collected. So we'll move on here to, um, to a person and describing the relationship between a person, a patient, a user, and a provider. So in the case of OpenMRS, a person is an individual, a human. It could be that that person who has a name, a full name, a first name, a last name, they might have a middle name too. They would have an, an address and they might have an attribute. So an attribute could be a phone number. So a person has all those things. That person could be a patient or it's possible they might be a user of the system or it could be that that person is a provider of some service in the health facility. So in OpenMRS, those are separate tables that are linked together so that you're, it's possible for patients to record names, addresses, and phone numbers, but you could do the same thing for a community health worker or a nurse. So person is a main table that collects, is a center point to connect various pieces of information about individuals. A patient, in addition, has other, other um, parts of the data model to describe them. And a patient is someone who re is receiving medical care. It's possible that a patient would have an identifier, which might be their medical record number, could be a national identifier, or it might be that they have a file, a paper file in the hospital with a, with a number. And uh, the patient identifier table is linked to that patient through a patient ID. In addition to that, there are other tables that describe things about that patient. It's possible that that patient is in an HIV program or in an NCD program or a research study for COVID. They also might have a particular workflow. So the patient, maybe it's important to show that that patient's currently in treatment that would be a state for the workflow as part of program enrollment. Programs have things like the date that a patient enrolls in that program, and then they might complete the program on a certain day with an outcome. And that they could, the outcome could be that the patient transferred out. It could be that the patient died. It could be that the patient was lost so that you would record those outcomes along with a completion date for the program. Another way that you can represent relationships between two different 
persons. So it could be that those persons are both patients. It could be a parent and a child. It could be that it's a patient with a provider like a doctor or a patient with their community health worker or siblings. And this is something that could be important to track in terms of how an infection does, um, is, could potentially be transmitted between people of the same household or partners, but it can also be used to represent relationships between caregivers. So other things having to do with persons is that you could have a user. So this is someone, a person, back to the person table. They can log into the system with a username and password. Uh, so it makes for some security, which is important with medical records. Um, that person, that user would have specific roles so the system might look different for those users. Um, an example of this is clinicians are able to enter information and view information uh, about a patient, clinical information. But maybe you would have uh, a data entry person who is registering demographic information, they would only collect demographic information, name, gender, birth date, but they would not have abilities to, um, because of privacy, to see clinical information of the patients. Um, the other thing you might want to um, use roles and privileges is that you could have a um, monitoring and evaluation or data analyst who's only able to, um, that they're, they're limited to um, data out of the system so they can do analysis, but you don't want them to be able to modify uh, patient data or to see certain forms on the system. And then providers, we were saying that it, this is a person who provides care or services to the patient. Um, every encounter has a provider. So, um, and those things could be a doctor, a nurse, a receptionist, data clerk, social worker, lab tech, community health worker, different providers of services. Now locations, um, location is something also, this is where services are provided. Every uh, encounter has location and that location could be uh, very tightly granulated so it could be something as um, a location could be a hospital <coughs> or a health center, but it could also be a specialty within a health facility. So you can say, this encounter happened at Nano Hospital, but you can also say that this encounter happened in the outpatient clinic of Nano Hospital. Um, and then another thing we think of together, but in the case of OpenMRS, our separate tables are addresses, which are normally home addresses for a person. So this could be the patient themselves. It could be the community health worker. It could also be a contact for a patient. Um, a person could have multiple addresses and OpenMRS is, is flexible so that you can specify and configure the address format for your country. So I'm using an example for Liberia where you would have the street 
and then the neighborhood, and then the name of the city, and then the county, followed by the country. In the case of Mozambique, you probably have a different address hierarchy, and we certainly do in the United States where we have things like zip codes and states. I talked a little bit about program enrollment on one of the previous slides. So uh, this is in relationship to patients, that patients can have an enrollment in a clinical or research study program. Uh, they would have uh, a start date, the name of the program, maybe it's a nutritional study, um, and also a location of where they enrolled in the program. They, while they're in the program, they might have a workflow and a single state assigned to them, a discrete state. It might be that they're waiting for education or it could be that they're currently on treatment. And then an outcome, which I was saying earlier, could be treatment completed, patient lost a follow-up, study ended, patient died. Those are outcomes and they have an end date. Okay, so these are um, additional tables and things in the data model um, that are very useful. In the case of orders, you can order something like a lab for a patient, and then in the end you get results back. Same thing with medications, a clinician would prescribe a medication or order, a medication, and then the pharmacy dispenses it. So it's a way of following um, instructions from one department to another within a facility. Another area are allergies. So this is a way of tracking allergies. And these are not related necessarily, uh, both allergies in the next conditions, are not associated with specific encounters. But if I have an allergy, it could be that I have an allergy to penicillin. And that is something that providers should be aware of whenever I come into the facility so that you don't have to continuously record things like allergies. Um, and allergies have what the allergen is, what the reaction to that allergy is. So if it's penicillin, maybe I have a rash. And the severity, which is, you know, maybe it's mild for me, or maybe it's severe. Um, and then the last thing, conditions. So this is to manage chronic diseases. Um, and important diagnoses for a patient. And it would usually have a start date and in some cases an end date. Conditions include things like diabetes, hypertension, HIV, sickle cell, usually chronic diseases that last over the course of the life of the patient. Something that starts at a particular time but likely does not go away. And this is one other fact about the data itself, which is as a rule, OpenMRS data model is set up so that data is not deleted from the system, but it is voided. So it still stays in the database but OpenMRS is designed to ignore that data so it won't show it to the users. So let's say I'm, somebody's entering information and they enter the wrong data for a person. They meant to enter something different. Then they would void the data, but it still would be available in the database. Uh, 
uh, forms, which are a key part of getting data into the system. Uh, forms are, were that example that I talked about as metadata. So um, basic forms, the basic system doesn't spe specify a single technology, just one way of entering data. So it could be that you're using HTML forms. That's one community developed module that allows you to enter data. It could be X forms. It could be that you're using custom micro front end, or you might be using bond me. And those all have various user interfaces, but are all add to the data model. They all create encounters and observations in the database. That's always the same. And then the key part is that once you put data into the system, you better be able to get it out of the system in a streamlined way. And I can think of the two key parts of getting data out. On the left, we see a patient dashboard. So this is a point of care system where a clinician wants to see information about the patient. So you have the name, you have the gender, and the age of the patient. You can see conditions for the patient, hypertension, you can see allergies for the patient. You might be able to see just an overview of their recent visits, lab results, what programs they are in. Likewise, you might want a dashboard with aggregate information, not specific to the patient, but used for data analysis. So in this example, the um, report dashboard for COVID shows how many patients were enrolled. So this is, has to do with program enrollment into COVID, that there were 35 patients enrolled into the COVID, COVID program and 26 are still enrolled. Um, you could also export full data out of the system and data is normally exported in comma separated values, so CSV format, that you could bring into Excel or Google Doc or however you want to process information. You might have your own tools like Power BI or Tableau or some other tool that you're going to visualize full data on. So I know that's a lot. Um, here is a practical exercise. So we've gone through a lot of information about the data model. Um, hopefully this is not too challenging, but it'll give you a chance to think about some of the topics we covered in the data model. So you'll be given a paper form, which is the COVID-19 daily progress note. You should complete the top form, top section of the form with either you can make it up or you use your own name, gender, age, ID, date, time, pulse, pain, and you're expected to match form elements. So I will show you how to do that. So this is the top of that paper form. And then the form itself, you see I've circled certain sections of the form, highlighted. And you should try to match from the table on the right, both the table and field to match the paper form. So for instance, where the patient name is highlighted, you should draw a line between the name, patient name 
section on the paper form and fill in where in the data model you would find the patient name. Thanks very much. I'm giving you my email address. Please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Ellen Ball and it's eball, B-A-L-L, -L, at P-I-H dot O-R-G. Again, eball at P-I-H dot O-R-G. Thank you very much.